Since the dawn of time, man has sought new and better ways to propel himself across his small planet. Now, a new age dawns as man discovers the foot. Stephen and little sister Pat and my little hedgehog and free who share my adventures with me. Yippee! Emily and her little cousins are playing together. It's a lovely day and Emily has organized a garden fete with lots of games. There's a greasy climbing pole set up in the middle of the garden. The children are clustered round it. Emily is trying to climb up, slips, and slides back to the ground. Go on, Emily. Come on, Emily. It's too hard. I'll never do it. Wait, I'll show you. Stephen climbs and reaches the top. He reaches out to get a huge barley sugar lollipop and slips down empty-handed. I'm going to try. Alec climbs to the top and manages to get the teddy bear, which is next to the lollipop. Well done. My turn. My turn. Nicholas tries. Slips. Alec and Stephen give him a push and Nicholas manages to get the balloon he was trying to reach, thanks to the help from the other boys. It's much too difficult. Who's coming with me to fish for the ducks? Me. Me. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm coming. coming. Wait oh, for me. How do you fish for ducks? You'll soon see. Come with us. The children reach the pond where little plastic ducks of all colours are floating about. Each duck has a ring on its back. The children take a fishing rod each. And I've got the red one. How do you do it? It's not very easy. I can't do it. I'm too small. I'll help you. Which one do you want? That one. There's your duck. Pretty little duck. Nicholas, stop splashing. You're making everyone wet. You won't catch a duck like that. I don't care. Anyway, I'm fed up with this game. I think we should play a quiet game now. Well, let's play hoopla. Yes, yes, yes. yes. let's. Oh, yeah. oh. You have to throw the ring over a bottle. The one who succeeds can choose a toy. Oh, missed. I did it! I did it! I take the whistle over there. Ah, there, I've done it! I'll take the red car. pushing me, you'll make me miss. I'm not patient. It's you. Oh, stop calling you too. There, do you see? I've done it. I'm going to take that big lorry. <laughs> Come and see what I've caught. The children crowd round <laughs> and they see Humphrey, who's scuttled in between the bottles and who's caught in Alec's ring. As you have a ring, Humphrey, you can choose a toy, too.
the snail. What do you want, Silas? Come on down here and I'll tell you. Wrong. Nothing's wrong. Come on down. I have a surprise for you. A but shh. Right, we'll right quiet. Come on, come on. <laughs> They'll be so happy when they see what I have in store for them. You fellas remember a, a couple of nights ago when you told me that you'd never seen the sunrise? Yeah. Well, now's the time. Cause pretty soon, boys, the night will get lighter and lighter. And then, before you know it, poof, <laughs> the sun will come up. Oh. Oh. Gee whiz, we've never seen the sun rise, Silas. No, we've never even been up this early before, have you? Yeah. Why, sure. The sunrise is one of my very favorite times of day. <gasps> really? Yep. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, I sure like the way everything <gasps> changes when the sun comes up. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. I love sitting here waiting for the rising yeah. of the mighty sun. Not yet. I'll let you know when. Okay. All right. Just relax. <sighs> relax. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a good idea. I think I'll just relax like this. <sighs> here yet? No, not yet. <sighs> Just a few seconds more. Uh, fellas, listen. Listen, uh, fellas. What, what? Open your eyes. What? Look. No. See, before you know it, the sun. <laughs> the sun. The sun. You rise. can see the sun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's <Whoa>. me. <laughs> hooray, hooray. Yay. The sun's up. Time to start the day. Yes, sir. Yeah. Up and at him. Rise and shine. Yes. Early bowl catches the worm. Ha, <laughs> ha. We saw the sun. Yeah. We saw the sun. Right. Isn't, isn't oh, this is right? yeah. beautiful? Yeah. Beautiful. Right. 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 Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> what do you think, Silas? How would you think? like Silas? Oh my. Silas. He's got to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> might come true. It all depends on you. Starlight, starlight, dream a dream. It's all right, oh. Some dreams do appear.
Mr. McHedry? Yes. Doug? Uh, Mr. McHedry, I need oil for my lamp. Could you give a can to Florence to bring to Beautywood? What? What? Uh, oh, operator, operator, please don't disconnect us. You say you have a can of oil? What? What? Oh, operator, don't cut us off. There's oil in Beautywood? Well, yes. Hello? Oh, don't cut us off. If Mr. McHenry says so, then it's true. There's oil in Beautywood. Hello? Hello, Doug? Oh, dear. We've been cut off. Hello, Mr. McHenry. Oh, hello, my little Florence. Dougal just told me over the phone that there's a can of oil in Beautywood. Here, uh, take this lamp and tell him to fill her up. I'd be happy to, Mr. McHenry. Zebedee! Zebedee! Here I am, Tulukatam. Quick, Zebedee. I must go to Beautywood to get some oil for Mr. McHenry's lamp. Let's go. Turn it to One, One, two, two three. three. Oh, the oil is here. I can smell it. I'd better mark off my property. Hey, is it really true there's oil here? Quiet, Brian. Oil gives black gold fever. It's very well known. Oh, oh. Who, who has a fever? No one has a fever. I was saying oil gives black gold fever. Oil? Yes, oil. And Mr. McHenry told me that there's oil in Beautywood. Oh, you hear? There's oil! There's oil! Brian, oh, oh, this dear little mollusk oh, has lost his cool. There's oil! There's oil! Well now, Brian, what's the matter? Oh, oh, Miss Ermintrude, Mr. McHenry says that Mr. Dougal says there, there's oil in Beautywood, but you can't tell anyone. It seems that it gives the black gold fever. Oh, really? All I have to do now is wait for the flow of the black gold. Then I can buy mountains of treats. Well now, Dougal, this installation, what's it for? I'm waiting for the arrival of the black gold. Mr. McHenry told me that there was oil in Beautywood. It's you who told Mr. McHenry that you had a can of oil. A can of oil? A can of oil? Look, he gave me this lamp for you to fill up with oil. His lamp? Oh, no. There's been a terrible misunderstanding. Oh. Would you, dear Briadom, investigate this pipe? Maybe the oil is in here. Oh, I'm on my way. Nothing at all, but as a return for the favor, could you please untie this knot? Here, Dougal. With this treat, you'll be well again by tomorrow. If you gave me another treat, too, I'd probably be better today. Mr. Dougal, did you find the oil? Oh, no, my dear little mollusk. But all is not lost. I didn't find black gold, but I already have its fever. Oh, oh. Pinwheel, pinwheel spinning around. Look through my pinwheel and see what I found. Pinwheel, pinwheel, where have you been? Hello and how are you, Emmett? And 
Piggledy wanted to know what a dog was. Frederick, Piggledy asked his older brother. Frederick, what is a dog? Come, I'll show you, answered Frederick. Follow me. And so Piggledy followed Frederick. As they entered into a big forest, Frederick began looking over his shoulder. Why do you keep looking around? I'm looking to see if there are any dogs around. And they continued walking through the forest. Piggledy also looked around, trying to see if he could spot a dog. I don't see a thing. Thank your lucky stars, said Frederick, quite relieved. You see, I'm really scared of dogs. Scared? said Piggledy. Scared? But you're always so big and brave, huh? Not when it comes to dogs, answered Frederick. They've always frightened me, but good. And they continued walking through the forest, looking around as they went. Why are you afraid? They bark and they growl said Frederick. Sometimes they bark so loud my ears hurt, and sometimes they jump up on me and lick me with their tongues. That's why. Maybe they're just trying to be friendly. That's ridiculous. Why do you say that? Dogs don't want to play with pigs. How do you know that? Why, you're so scared of them. I'll bet you never even asked a dog to play with you. Have you? Look, look, a dog. And there, sitting in the garden, was a little puppy. You're afraid of that? Well, he doesn't scare me. Maybe it's because he's not jumping or barking. See, you don't have to be afraid. You're right. Why don't we ask him to play? And after playing with the dog, the two tired pigs went home. <laughs> Thank you. 
Be back after these messages. Why is alphabets fun to eat? Ours for robots. There's a robot in my alphabet. How does it taste? <laughs> Post alphabet cereal, part of this nutritious breakfast. You can eat the fun. We got alphabet stickers. A, C. A is for artist. That's me. Five letters to stick on your stuff. You can never. And each box marked specially. Taste the rainbow. Skittles bite-sized candies. of fruit flavors in Skittles. Presenting Beef Tenderloin in Tarragon Sauce. 
Rum Zabaglione with fresh strawberries and amaretti. Imagine elegant dishes like these, surprisingly easy to prepare in 45 minutes or less. All in this remarkable recipe collection that's yours free to introduce you to the magazine of good living. Gourmet, from cover to cover. Gourmet is an adventure for the senses and spirit. It's a trip to charming hotels and restaurants off the beaten track. It's a shopping spree for Florentine silver on the Ponte Vecchio. Month after month, Gourmet brings you menus and settings and the imaginative recipes. Everything from choosing the right wines to adding the perfect finishing touch. Call toll-free to get 12 exciting issues of Gourmet for $12. Plus, receive your copy of In Short Order, free with your paid subscription. Call now, 1-800-327-8000. You're watching Nickelodeon. Now, back to Pinwheel. In the forest is a house where the hunter lives. His dog's name is Pushkin. Pushkin's front legs are very fast. But his back legs are even faster. So sometimes he trips and does a somersault. Like that. There I am, walking across the field. And there is Pushkin coming from the other way. He probably wants to chase a rabbit or a mouse. Or me, Schnuddel. Oh, there's Pushkin. He's a long way off. What's he doing now, I wonder? He's looking for something. I hope it's not me. Pushkin is sniffing along the ground. I do think it's me he wants. Hello, Pushkin. Now, why are you looking at me like that? I hope you don't want to fight. because I have very strong muscles. It could be a very bad day for you. You've got to be very careful. I can fight too, you know. I can get in there and fight like anything. But Pushkin shakes his ears. No. And then he does it again. Good dog, Pushkin. Good dog. I didn't want to have to fight you. You must be careful, though. There are big animals in the woods. Mice and rabbits. Goodbye. And so I go home. Schnoodle the wild dog tamer. I wouldn't fight him, you know. I just said that because I was a little scared. This is Robert. This is Grandpa Hinkle. This is Grandma Hinkle. And this is Benji. This is Grandma and Grandpa Hinkle's garden. This is Grandma and Grandpa Hinkle's house. And this is Robert's tree. Grandma and Grandpa Hinkle gave Robert the tree when he came from the orphanage to live with them. Robert and Benji had lived in the treehouse for two weeks. Robert found a mattress in a nearby dump, and they both slept on it. Grandma Hinkle brought them breakfast. Hello up there. Time for you to wake up. 
Do you think they will ever come out today? Asked Grandma Hinkle. Grandma Hinkle tied a rope around the basket, and Grandpa threw the rope over the branch. The basket was lifted up. Robert and Benji had breakfast in the treehouse. How about doing some somersaults? No one said a word. How are we going to get them to come down? They haven't taken a bath in weeks. I will think of something. Just wait. I've got it, Grandpa shouted suddenly. Children like to slide. When I was young, I had a slide. Didn't Robert mention something about a slide he saw in the city dump? Woof! I never thought an old slide would be so heavy, puffed Grandma Hinkle. Now don't complain. Just think how happy Robert will be when he sees the slide, Grandpa Hinkle said. Do you think a boy of your age, with a dog in his arms, could slide right down on this slide? Sure, I can. Hooray! I have a slide, shouted Robert. You slid down like a real pro, said Grandpa proudly. When I grow up, Benji and I are going to join the circus as Super Rainbow Treehouse Sliders, Robert said. For me to call up Smitty and get a story in the Daily Noodle, I'd be famous. Don't you want to be in the Daily the, ah, <laughs> Noodle? No. no. <laughs> uh, I tried every trick in the book. I tried lunging at him from behind, lunging at him from the front. Nothing works. Maybe I should just forget about tricks. I know. Here's a new one. I'll be polite. Yeah, yeah, maybe if I just ask him nicely. Never tried that way before. Oh, excuse me, uh, uh, Mr. Admiral Bird. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen, I've got this problem, see? <gasps> oh. Uh, yeah, 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 well, see, you see, Mr. Admiral Bird, I want to get my picture in the Daily Noodle more than anything in the whole world. You do. Why? Well, because I'm a wonderful person and more people should know about me. Oh. <laughs> so, anyway, if you'd be so kind as to stay here while I call up Smitty, then... No! no. Oh, please. No, no, no. Pretty please. No, no, no. Pretty, pretty please. No, no, no. Pretty, pretty please with cream and sugar on it. No, 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 no. Um, uh, pretty, pretty please with cream and sugar and a scoop of ice cream and a cherry on top. Oh. No, 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 no. Uh, 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 let's see, let's see. Uh, pretty, pretty please with cream and sugar and a scoop of ice cream and a cherry and I'll be your best friend. Woo! No, no, no. Um, 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 uh, pretty, pretty please with cream 
and sugar and a scoop of ice cream and a cherry and I'll be your best friend and I'll throw in my dust collection and an autographed picture of me. <sighs> What kind of ice cream? Any kind you want. You like strawberry? Anything else? Two cherries? Okay, 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 where was I? Uh, uh, pretty, pretty, please, with cream and sugar and a scoop of ice cream. Strawberry ice cream. Two cherries on top. I'll be your best friend, and I'll throw in my dust collection and an autographed picture of me. Now, what do you say? <laughs> no! no. <laughs> I've had enough of politeness. Next time, I'll use a net. One day, the eagle called all the birds together for a meeting. From near and far came the birds. The blue jay, the owl, the crow, the robin. Why, even the cuckoo and the peacock came. And also the little sparrow. The eagle gave his speech. As you all well know, I am the strongest of all the birds, and therefore you should make me your king. The other birds were not quite sure whether they liked this idea. They were very happy with their freedom, but they did not want to go against the eagle. It was at this moment that the little sparrow spoke. I believe, he said, that since we are all birds, our king should not be the strongest of us, but the one who can fly the highest. All the birds agreed to this. They all stood on line on the open field and waited for the cuckoo's signal to fly away into the air. Soon, the little birds gave up. The bigger birds soared higher. But none could fly as high as the eagle. I am the king, shouted the eagle down to the other birds waiting for him on the ground. No, said a voice suddenly somewhere over the eagle's head. I am the king. It was the sparrow. He had climbed onto the back of the eagle and had been carried high into the air with him. The eagle was very angry. He flew higher and higher until he was above the clouds. Yet every time he would shout, I am the king, I am the highest bird in the world, the sparrow would shout back, No, I'm the king of the birds. Finally, the eagle became tired and had to return to earth. The sparrow flew happily behind him, and as soon as he had landed, all the birds named him their king. The sparrow thanked the other birds for their wishes and said, Dear friends, it is a great honor for me to be your king. However, I do not believe that we birds need a king. Therefore, I have decided that we shall live as before, free and without a king. And so it is still today, and the eagle just had to accept it. In a country called Sweden lives a boy called Charlie. And outside his house, there's a tree, Charlie's climbing tree. He likes to climb his tree and lie there thinking, most of all about Emma, his pretend friend. Under the tree sits Charlie's grandpa, reading the newspaper. <laughs> while up in the tree lies Charlie, dreaming. As usual, Charlie was lying up in his tree, trying to think about Emma. And as usual, Grandpa was reading the paper. Mm -hmm. Pet shop bankrupt, he read. 
All the animals without homes. Mm -hmm. Bankrupt, explained Charlie to the tree, means that all their money's run out, and so they've got to close the shop. Poor animals. They can come and stay with me, thought Charlie. If I build a big cage over the tree, that would be perfect. They could all live in the cage. All the animals could come and live here. The mice, the guinea pigs, the fish could come and swim around. and the parrots, and the monkeys, and the canaries, and the rabbits, though not necessarily in that order. They'd need an awful lot of food. What you'd really need is your own vegetable garden, with all the different sorts of vegetables so that each animal could eat exactly what he wanted. There'd be lettuce and carrots. That's for the rabbits. Then there'd be dandelion leaves and hay. That's for the guinea pigs and some flea powder. And the mice, what would the mice have?